good morning. Today is the 6th of June, a Tuesday, and we're somewhere we haven't been for a long. Yeah, we're over the Living Memorial. Yep, and it's for the unveiling of this. Turn the camera around. It's the Norman Hill Memorial. Anyway, I'll catch you again probably in a minute. Yes, as I say, anyway, we're over with the gun. Here's one Land Rover. And the other Land Rover. And the gun. Which will be firing at 11 o'clock. Anyway, Queen's going to be taking over video in his usual day. And uh, I'll talk to you again later. Yeah, when it goes. Thank <laughs> you. 
When we get to 11 o'clock, it's going to happen. Okay. Right, I think uh, if there's anybody still heading this way, please come and join us. My name is Simon Law. Um, I'm the rector of Pitsy with Nevenden, which is not very far away from here. Um, and uh, every Remembrance Sunday at St. Gabriel's Church in Pitsy, we have a service. And I've been delighted that Don has often attended that service uh, when we've gone over to the War Memorial in Howard Park. And I'm delighted and honoured that Don should ask me to leave this service today and uh, I didn't I have to confess I didn't even know that this place existed so I've learnt a lot in the last um, few days and a big thanks to Joe as well who's um, put everything together and uh, made it all happen yes you may give her a round of applause well done. She did get a bit of help. let us remember before God all who took part in the Normandy landings those who gave their lives as comrades in the British Army, the Royal Navy, the Royal Air Force, and from other countries whom we remember with pride. And we pray that, loyal to their example and their sense of duty, we may ever be vigilant of freedom, peace, and security. Heavenly Father, on this, the 79th anniversary of D-Day and the Battle of Normandy, we give thanks to you in our prayers. We pray, O oh God, that you will give succour to those still suffering from their wounds and comfort to those who mourn their loved ones. Let us pray. God of truth and justice, we hold before you those who live among us, those whose memory we cherish, and those whose names we will never know. Amen. Now let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in conflict, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of humanity. I'm now going to ask Don to read the exhortation. Let us remember with thanksgiving and honour all those who gave their lives to their sovereign and country, they shall go and old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
tell them of us and say for your tomorrow we gave ours today. Amen. Most merciful and ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. Grant that we, being faithful to death, may receive with them the crown of life that never fades through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the first of our readings, Jonathan's going to come and read uh, Normandy. Normandy by Juno veteran Cyril Crane. Come and stand in memory of men who fought and died, of men who fought and died. They gave their lives in Normandy, remember them with pride. Soldiers, airmen, sailors, airborne and marines, who in civvy life were tailors and men who worked machines. British and Canadian and men from the USA Forces from the Commonwealth, they all were there that day. To Juno, Sword and Utah, beaches of renown, also gold and Omaha, that's where the ramps went down. The battle raged in Normandy, many lives were lost. The war must end in victory, and this must be the cost. When my life is over and I reach the other side, I'll meet my friends from Normandy and shake their hands with pride. Thank you very much. Now Jackie's going to come and read the veterans. The veterans, they ask us why we do it, why we still parade, now that we are getting older and just a little frayed. It's not for the sake of glory or the medals on our chest. It's simply that we are comrades who stood the final test. On the 6th of June, that fateful day, a day that we will never forget, many a lad laid down his life and paid the final debt. So when you see a veteran, give the man your hand, for the medals on his chest were won in foreign lands. And when God asks the question, who are you, my man? I will proudly answer, sir, they are veterans. Thank you very much. And now June, who's the Deputy Mayor of Chelmsford, is going to come and read A Quiet Place. A quiet place. It's quiet here. So quiet standing on this hill. But if I stand here too much longer, my eyes with tears will fill. Looking down, and there again on that beach, just down below, far different to that morning that I remember so. That beach, it was a hell on earth where no man should ever go. I remember I was down there, I should know. Don't cry now, dear old soldier. That was many years ago. 
Thank you very much. I'd like to read a bit from the Bible. This is from uh, the Gospel according to Matthew, and it's Jesus' words uh, in his Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I was struck recently by um, my, my youngest daughter um, is doing a sixth form college course and she had to do a study of the 1970s. So she came to me and she said, Dad, you were alive in the 1970s, can you tell me what happened? So I said, yeah, okay, I can run a few things past you. And then I remembered that the BBC had produced a brilliant series of programmes called the Rock and Roll Years which went from about 1956 right through to the 90s. And each half hour programme had the music of that year and the events that were going on in the news. And so I had a wonderful nostalgic couple of days when I sat down with my daughter and watched the entire 1970s on the rock and roll years. And it got to, I think it was 1977, and there was a, a clip from the news where President Jimmy Carter of the United States of America, who's a Christian, got Menachem Begin from Israel, who was a Jew, with Anwar Sadat from Egypt, who was a Muslim. And he got, the three of them got together and they signed a peace deal. And I remember Jimmy Carter was quite brave because he said to a Jew and a Muslim, as a Christian, Jesus Christ said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And it was a fantastic moment but as somebody observed to me today, when I got here for this ceremony, nobody's taking any notice. Nobody's realizing that the world needs to change. The world needs to be at peace. And today is an example, sadly, of the fact that we haven't listened. We had a terrible, terrible war in which many people that involved people like Don, many people died and still the world doesn't listen. All I can ask for all of us is that we will just continue to think about peace and pray for peace and believe that we need to be a part of that peacemaking process. And if we can, the world will be a better place as a result. One very brief story from me before we pray. Um, I had an uncle um, that I never knew. Uh, Frank, his name, Frank Clark, and he joined the Royal Norfolk Regiment uh, before the war, mainly because he wanted to play in the band. The, uh, he wasn't a guitar player like me, he was a clarinet player, but um, uh, he'd heard that the Royal Norfolk Regiment had a, a brilliant band and he wanted to join and play, and he did. And then the war broke out. And uh, he was one of those people that was selected uh, for D-Day. I, I confess I don't know which of the beaches he was on, but he was with the Royal Norfolks and uh, he was in a tank, a Churchill tank, and uh, he was, as far as I know, in the first assault. And he was wounded. He died on the 8th of June, 1944, of his wounds, shrapnel in the head and shrapnel in the leg. And an uncle I never knew. Um, some years ago, when my mum was 70, I took her to Ermanville Sumer, where her brother was buried. She'd never been. We went to the cemetery and we found his grave. 
and she was able just to remember. But the thing that struck me, and it struck me amazingly today, is that my Uncle Frank was born in 1920. If he'd lived, he would be 103, exactly the same age as Don today. So I never knew him, I've seen the pictures, but I just knew that he was somebody who was prepared to stand up for what he believed in to be right. Sadly, he's no longer with us physically, but I do believe that he's in God's care. Let us pray, first of all, for peace. God of our joy and gladness, hear our prayer for the peace of this world and bring us at last with all our companions in faith to the peace of that city where you live and reign, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and to all eternity. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for protection. O oh, Father, your power is greater than all powers. O oh, Son, under your leadership we cannot fear anything. O oh, Holy Spirit, under your protection there is nothing we cannot overcome. For the rule of God to be established, your kingdom come, O oh Lord, with deliverance for the needy, with peace for the righteous, with overflowing blessing for all nations, with glory, honour and praise for the only Saviour, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us remember and pray for the present day members of the armed forces, wherever they may be serving our King and country. Grant that they may meet danger with courage and all occasions with discipline and loyalty <coughs> and that they may eventually return home safe to their loved ones. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father and so in faith and trust we say Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to finish with an act of commitment where we commit ourselves to the service of humanity and then we shall sing the national anthem. Uh, just to remind you, if you haven't got the order of service, it's God Save the King. Um, I, I have to remind everybody in church when we do it as well, but, but I'm, sure, I'm sure the veterans won't have any trouble in singing God Save the King. But anyway, if you have the order of service, um, there is a... a a prayer after my introduction. If you would join in with me, that would be lovely. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and humanity, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. We pray together. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all your peoples in the cause of peace for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful, now and always. Amen. Now, if you are able to stand, would you please stand? And uh, Joe has got the music here, and we shall sing.
Now, would you please be seated? And I'm going to ask um, Colonel Hugh Toler if you'll come and say a few words. Excuse me. You're a photographer, but in this national anthem, can you just mo First, stop I'm moving? First, I'm take the opportunity to thank yes. Colonel Peter. Thank you very much for making this place, this day, this whole occasion possible. Without your kindness, your generosity, your inspiration, we would not be here today. So thank you very, very much indeed. And thank you all to the veterans for being so stalled on parade. I'll be as brief as I can. Don't worry, Rick. <laughs> Seriously, we are gathered here today to remember what happened this morning, 79 years ago. It all started in the early hours of the morning. Operation Overlord got underway. To prepare for it, over two million troops had gathered in Britain from around the world. And as these great operations take great planning, it had all started back in 1943, and then taken over by General Eisenhower in the December of 43, and the plan launched, as you know. First of all, with a great airborne landing, 18,000 airborne troops led the way, followed at dawn by 132,000 seaborne troops coming ashore, borne by 7,000 vessels. Those figures put into perspective what a massive contribution you all made as veterans and as a nation we made in the past. It is absolutely staggering to think of those numbers when we look at what we're doing today. Really outstanding. 14,000 sorties were generated. Essex alone had 12 air bases in it which contributed to that great endeavor. And of course, Operation Overlord was just the start. It wasn't the only D-Day, there had been many D-Days before. D-Day is just the term we use for the day on which an operation starts. But it was the greatest operation of its kind ever. And it is only right and fitting that we are remembering it here today in this fine setting. It is only fitting that the airborne forces are commemorated here with that statue as they led the way on the day. And that operation heralded peace in Europe. It didn't come immediately. It took several more airborne operations. It took an amphibious operation crossing the Rhine. It took a hard slog through Normandy to get all the way across to peace in our time in 1945. But it started that process. And we still guard that peace today. In fact, if you think about it, the Cold War was only a part of securing that peace. And those of you who served in Germany and wonder why you're on the north side of Germany and the cold bit when the Americans had the south side and the comfortable bit, well, it's because we landed on the beaches on the left-hand side on the north bit and the Americans landed on the, on the right-hand side on the south bit. And uh, we continued that way all the way through to the end of the Cold War with our American allies on our right flank. And we now look into Europe today, and I hope we never have to repeat what we have done or what was done 79 years ago. Let us hope for peace. After that great endeavor, would we ever be able to make that again? I sincerely hope we never have to do so. And thank you all very much indeed for coming here today. I'm now going to hand over. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hugh. just ask you to uh, bow your heads for one final blessing. May God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth and all people, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Stand and veterans and veterans, right, turn.
I think the parade is going to come through here. So would you please stand? Thank you very much.
who can't travel as I couldn't do to Normandy which I've been there year after year and neither the operators in the north so Fran and Peter have, have decided that this is going to be the future for all the armed forces <coughs> memorials even when we're gone, families can come here and uh, they have raised the past uh, for what we do. So thank you very much and Peter, both of you. Thank you. I've just got a couple of things I'd like to give out. This is for you. I just got this message this morning, um, which was, Dad wants to know, do you drink any other wine apart from communion wine? So I responded and said, yeah, the answer is yes. So thank you very much indeed. Um, Fran, will you come and tell everybody where to go now? For, uh, and not, not where to go in that sense, but where to go to get refreshed. Um, oh, we've got something else. We thought, wood, the wood, uh, the rafters. We've got felt it permanent. If you feel you would like to sign them, we've got the varnish and we're going to varnish them. So it will say, you know, that you were here this day. So we've got loads of felt tip. Rob's got them. Rob's got them. Where's Rob? Oh, there he is. So you can get one of these, Rob. Please sign yeah. your name. Um, and um, we will with the gun for a right. one photo shoot. Hey, it's okay. Can you just get in the car. Most of you know where you're going. Back into the front field. You'll see the marquees up. Uh, some of you probably will have to sit out, I'm afraid. But you know, tell me it's going to be sunny by one o'clock. So. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't Hello. see that. Yes. Hello. How are you? Are you? I'm okay. Oh, sorry. You okay? You okay? Just saw you. You're okay? Yes, thanks. I think so. That's good. Yeah, me, me legs. I couldn't have walked after that. Too cold. Oh, okay. Uh, take care. You all right? Yeah. Jolly. Just, yeah. Hello. 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 Hello.
Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, there we are. Thank you. Thank you. It's a video. <laughs> We've had a bigger machine gun show last week, but uh, in the
thanks for watching my YouTube video. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.